get it, man. How did they? So it's a damped microfiber. How did they do that? So cool. Hi, this is Kevin Deal from Upscale Audio, and today we're going to talk about the Mission 770 speaker. Oh my God, I feel young again. Uh, in fact, well, you know what? I don't know if I feel that young because, as you guys know, I gotta say something. You know, I'm going in for a knee replacement surgery, and I just made a little mention of it, and I got people writing me and stuff, giving me advice on it. Therapy, 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 therapy. Everyone's saying, but it, this is what I want to say. I'm so grateful that people even care. And it really made me feel good. I mean, I, I talked to my wife, Laura, about it, and it's just like, you know what? I really love the people in our audience, and I love all the audiophiles. I mean, even if you don't buy anything, you, have, you know, I freaking love you people. And I, and I mean that. It makes me kind of a, almost emotional to have this uh, connection with you. And why do I feel young, though? Because... I sold mission speakers back in the, the day, right? Back uh, when I was working at uh, RSL and actually uh, before that, and I'm very familiar with the brand and I love the brand and we were in listening to the speaker. And you know what we had to do, right? We had to be listening to Dire Straits, Sultan of Swing, because I forget when that came out, but it was like right in tune with, uh, with the founding of Mission and back in the, when I was selling them before, the original 770s. And I mean, okay, so Mission is a British company. Uh, start, uh, the designer back then was a guy named uh, Farad uh, Azima, as I re recall. And uh, God, you know, I've got several pairs of them now. I, I'm not kidding. People talk about, if you come to my store, the, up in the rafters, there's called Kevin's DNI, Do Not Inventory. And my dream is to be able to get out my old Mission 780s, my 781s, which are actually in the service department. I got 760s. I got, uh, I used to have a pair of 782s. I don't know what happened to them, but I've always loved their stuff. They sounded so good back then. Uh, you know, the, the deal was like the Spender BC1. I've, I've never been, and I don't mean to insult anybody, I never was a big fan of that speaker because it had this weird kind of a resonance on the uh, the top end or towards the top end that just, uh, just hit me the wrong way. But Mission speakers never did, and they were really quite different. Some of them were absolute power-hungry monster little boxes, and some of them were moderately efficient. This speaker uh, is a rebirth of the 770, which is one of the most iconic speakers in the history of hi-fi. <clears throat> and before I get to how it sounds, I want to talk to you about how it measures. This, and I love what they did. This is what the, this is an 8-inch two-way, right? And I love 8-inch two-way speakers. I love them because, man, they can get the mid-range right. I mean, an 8-inch... A uh, bass driver that's doing double duty up into the mid band, it gets this, it gets this, and this, the chest of the sound. And that's what the speaker does really, really well. So it's an 8 inch two way. I gotta talk about the top end. This is a 28 millimeter tweeter, and it is damped microfiber. Super, super cool. Now, what they wanted to do is they wanted to put it in its own little uh, sub-enclosure rear chamber because they wanted to lower the resonant frequency of the driver so it was out of the, cro the reach of the crossover. It's well below the crossover point of the speaker, which is uh, 2,800 hertz. And I, I'm just going to tell you, I think a lot of people have talked about how they like this bass driver. I think that for me, the rubber meets the road in the mid band, and then, I mean, because the bass is superb. The top end, which is what I trip out a lot with a lot of speakers, the top end is absolutely non-fatiguing. I did a level matched AB comparison with two amps. We used an 80 watt name, uh, the Super uh, Nate, uh, and then we used a 36 watt Prima Luna, because I was just wondering how it would perform with tubes, because I know that you're going to want to know. This is an 8-ohm speaker, and what we found is 
you know, so many speakers don't really measure eight ohms. They don't measure even six ohms. A lot of them are going to sound better on a four ohm tap on a tube amplifier. This speaker works best on an eight ohm tap based on our experience. Depending on what amp you have, you, you might want to come to your own conclusions. But with us, absolutely sounded best on the 8-ohm tap of a speaker. And while I'm talking about that, I'm going to tell you that a 36-watt Prima Luna running, EL well, you know, it's closer to 40 watts, really, uh, running uh, a pair of EL34s in each channel absolutely rocked it. And I was wondering if that was going to happen. I was wondering if this speaker was going to be really really hard to drive and it is not now another reason i think i like the sound of the speaker so much is the cabinet i'm going to show you a picture of the cabinet kind of blown up here um this cabinet is a what do they call it oh it's called a constrained layer cabinet so i have a couple of different materials with a damping material in between the two of them and i've wrapped on dense cabinets before but this one I don't want to say it sounds different it's the lack of sound difference and that's what you want to have you want to hear the drivers you want to hear the effects of having a base port without chuffing but you don't want to hear the cabinet and you absolutely do not. They come in a black wood finish, and then this is uh, the beautiful uh, uh, standard uh, walnut finish, which I I, I, I kind of love this because I love a, a classic design. How's the bottom end? Bottom end is bitching. And what impressed me most, which I love about speakers like this, is the ability of this speaker to absolutely disappear. And it does a, a, a stupendous job of that. The bottom end is great. It turned up without like resisting. I mean, look, if you're like, if you used to be in, you know, Guns N' Roses, formerly guitar player, if that's where your head's at, maybe this is not going to be for, none of, maybe none of these are going to be for you. Maybe you want to look at some of the high efficiency, you know, like clip speakers, and they will really turn up loud for you. Uh, but this speaker, I mean, it really rocked my world oh my god comes with a beautiful uh grill which we left out stupid and it comes with these stands and i love the stands because they get it right up right now we've got these elevated up so i can touch them and feel them but when they're sitting on the stands they're going to be about 41 inches high which is probably around around here i guess and that's right where you want it you know you want the tweeter to be more or less at your uh ear level so Man, so check these out. They're 5000 a pair. It's not inexpensive. Why is it so much? Because of the quality of the parts and because this is a handmade product made at uh, their factory in Huntington in England. So this is a true British-made, hand-built product. And you can, you know, when you touch it and feel it and look at it, you know, it exudes quality so talk to our non-commissioned salespeople. come over to our fabulous showroom here we'll play them for you we'll tell you how they're going to work with your speakers if you ever want to get even like crazy bottom end don't forget we sell more rel subwoofers than probably any company uh you know just about the the we sell more rel and jail subs than any independent dealer in the country because we know how to integrate them so well so don't forget to talk to us about that upscale audio i promise you we're going to treat your system like it's ours thanks